It's a good question. I think jail is just a hyper condensed version of life. As a man, you have to show other people respect. Otherwise, violence will happen very quickly. It's the same out here in the real world, but in jail, it's condensed. It's, it's pressurized. You have to have mental control. You have to have control of your own mind out here in the real world or you'll get depressed. Jail is the same. It's pressurized. So as long as you're good at life, you'll be good at jail. And I've never been a bully. I've never been an abrasive or aggressive person. I know how to respect people and make sure that I'm respected. And all in all, I don't think it taught me anything new. It just confirmed everything I knew about the realities of being human. Only chance you have to escape any of this is exceptionalism. Exceptional finance and networking capability. There's no other way about it. And if you're the average person sitting here going, my life's going to be fine, you are in for a very, very rude awakening. The average person's life in the 1950s, the average man could go and work in a factory and come home to a big house and have a wife and kids and two cars in the drive from working in a factory. Now we have a man and a woman both working full-time jobs with university degrees, can't even pay the bills. This is life is going off a cliff. The trend is clear. I'm not crazy for pointing it out. So if anybody wants to sit here and disagree with me, that's cope. They're just being an ostrich and hiding their head in the sand and praying for better days. That's their decision. But yes, it's going to be certainly very difficult to become exceptional, which means you don't have time to sit around worrying about how you feel. Isn't it amazing how everything goes full circle? Men don't have time to sit around crying their eyes out and saying how hard it is and dealing with their feelings and being sad and being depressed and doing all this garbage the Matrix tries to tell them to do because the reason the Matrix tells them to do those things is so they get funneled into the slave force for the life I just laid out before. Instead, you have to wake up and say, this is almost impossible, but I'm going to do it. And you have to get it done. Just as I have from Luton Council Estate to billionaire to jail to billionaire. Maybe should, back to jail. It's going to become harder and harder for anybody to have any in, any significance in the world today unless they're an exceptional person. That is a fact. That is hard for most people to do. True. But you better find a way to pull it off. Because once you become a useless eater, once you become somebody who needs food and is no use to the people who make the food, you're going to soon learn that throughout all of human history, it ended the same way for those type of people. Absolutely. It's absolutely easier said than done. Because to become great means you have to be exceptional which means that even as the average improves, as the medium or mean improves, it becomes harder and harder to become exceptional. Yes, that doesn't mean it's not true. I'm not here to give everybody happy lies. I'm not gonna be like the Matrix and give everyone comfortable happy lies, because that's what they do. They sit and say, don't worry, just go to school and work hard in school. Don't worry, just go to college and work hard in college. Don't worry, just get in university debt. Don't worry, just get a career, then get a mortgage. Pay your mortgage, pay off your student loans. Don't worry, when you're 68, you might be able to go on holiday, don't worry. Take your injections, take nine or you lose your job, then you lose your house, then you lose your family, then you lose everything. Don't talk out of line. Don't write on Facebook or you lose your job. You have student debts to pay. Be quiet, be good. Happy lives, you'll have a good life. No, that's all a lie and it's all garbage. I'm not gonna sit here and give sugar-coated lies. And the brutal realities of life as a man is constant and, and, and never-ending war. And I mean that for every man on earth. You're at war right now. If you're at home watching this, you're at war. Well, it's, that's the term jihad, it, but it usually means a self-struggle. No, it's, well, it's Perfect, even better, self-struggle, you nailed it. That's what I was about to say with war. Getting to your job and back without losing your temper in the commute is war. Taking care of your family is war. Raising your children despite the pro government propaganda being injected into their ear is war. Maintaining a healthy body and mind is constantly war. Paying your bills is war. Life as a man is war. But the reason it's so important to be careful with this word is because one of the core tenets of being a man is intolerance. If you're a man, you're intolerant. You have principles, and principles can't be broken, which makes you intolerant. You have duty, which means you can't have your actions changed or psyoped out of you, which makes you intolerant. You have land you're supposed to protect. You have a, your people you're supposed to protect, your family. You don't want strangers turning up in your house. You're intolerant of random guests at three in the morning. If you're half, if you're half good as a man, if you're half good as a man, you're intolerant of a lot of things. So I would never sit here and call myself a tolerant man because that makes me a walkover. And I'm certainly not a walkover. I am tolerant, sure, but not in this hijacked sense of the word where I'm going to allow myself and my people and those I care about to be decimated by the insane agents of Satan. I believe that it's inside of every single heart of every single person to resist and struggle against oppression. I believe that God especially made men, masculine men, since the dawn of time, all of our great stories and all of our history all of our heroes were men who fought against oppression and oppressive forces and enemy forces. You want to talk about Winston Churchill? You want to talk about uh, Napoleon? You talk about any of the Western world? You talk about uh, Nelson? 
all of our heroes, the ones that are on the statues are the men who stood up and said enough. So in the purple versus blue people, perhaps the purple people will be oppressing the blue people for a very long time, stealing their land. The blue people will eventually stand up and say enough, of, enough is enough of this. We are tired and we're prepared to die to stand up for what we believe in because we have duty and we have honor. It would be extremely asinine for anyone to sit here and say, no, you could just oppress people forever and they'll never resist. And if they resist, they're the bad guys. It's insane to sit and think that men should not have any kind of resistance inside of their hearts against deliberate and constant endless oppression. That's insane. And to sit here and say that's okay, once again, is insane. And to sit here and condemn both sides. No, I'm not going to condemn the masculine spirit of resistance. I'm not going to do that because that's in disingenuous. Of course. I mean, we can sit here and talk about exceptions disproving the rule all day long. No, no, we can. Yeah, right, we can. Right, you know, right? right. You know, there's some people who can swim faster than a fish. And we humans are faster swimmers than fish because there's one swimmer which is faster than this one kind of fish. Let's talk about this all day. Is life survival of the fittest? It always has been. It always has been. And it's the same for, it's always has been, and it's the same for ideas. It's the same for ideas right now. We just talked about religion. A lot of people in the West are upset that Islam is conquering the Western world. That's not Islam's fault. That's Christianity's fault. You've left a power vacuum. You don't allow people to worship God and feel respected in any way. So it's being filled by a religion where people can worship God and have their views respected. That is Christianity's problem. And for us to sit here and say, do I believe the world is survival of the fittest? I would like you to name a time in human history. Since the dawn of human history, where it's never been survival of the fittest. I ask you, sir, a question, my first one. Has it ever not been? That's exactly the way the world is right now. But you have powerful versus weak. But let's not confuse that with right and wrong. They can be very different things. I'm an innocent man who've done nothing wrong. But when 50 men with machine guns come here to my house and drag me out of my house, they're powerful, I'm weak, I have to go to jail. Even though I'm innocent. Right? So let's not confuse, let's not conflate the two issues. We can talk about the fact that colonialism has been purported by or perpetuated by extremely powerful countries, which would come, all of Europe chopped up Africa. They'd come, they'd take all the natural resources, they'd enslave the populace. They were more powerful, they had gunpowder, they had more organized armies, and they did all of this because they were powerful and they were weak. There was a power vacuum, just as we discussed with religion and ideas, and they took control. That doesn't mean it was right. That doesn't mean the people who were being subjugated were, who deserved it. We can talk about good and bad, and we can talk about evil, and we can talk about righteousness, and then we can talk about the the life we live here on Earth and power structures. They're, they're actually not very related. So I understand what you're saying, but these are different conversations, sir. You do, I think. Sir, I know. Everyone knows. The car charges against them are complete garbage. The cases against them are complete garbage, and they're doing it to try and stop him getting in power because they don't want him to be president because they'd rather have a president who doesn't know what's going on so they can just tell his advisor, here's X amount of million, pass this law. That's what they want. The shadow figures want to control the world, and they don't want to have an employee, which is what they'd see him as, just as I described in my imaginary company earlier, who's belligerent. They don't want to have somebody in charge who you can't buy or bribe or blackmail or scare. Trump is going to sit there and say, I have enough money, I'm too old to want more, and I care about my country, I'm going to do what's right for the country. I'm not going to do what's right for you, the big interests and the big money and the globalists. And that's why they're trying to take him down. It's absolutely not really completely a matrix attack. And when I say it's important for the culture, because it is, because Trump is a masculine man, and a world where being masculine is inst instantly bad for some reason, and it will be massively important for the culture, just as I've been a cultural icon, so, will, so is he, and so will he help push the culture in the positive direction of healthy masculinity. So it's extremely important for the culture and also it will slow the rot. I don't believe it can stop. Truthfully, I don't believe it can stop the rot of Western nations, but he can slow it down, which has to be a good thing. Let's delay the sinking of the Titanic for four more years, why not? And who's his serious competition? Who's, who's gonna run against Trump? Name someone competent running against Trump. I think it complements perfectly because when you work hard to be the best version of yourself so you can protect and provide for the people you care about, you're pleasing God. And you do that so that you can wake up and show him the beauty of his own creation. I can be the best version of me. I can make the people around me have the best possible lives. I'm not gonna sit and be lazy or not try. And I believe that's all about building your character. It's not even about the money. It's about being the best version of yourself. If all the money in the world was taken from me, that's fine because I've still been a person who's worked very hard, been very diligent, who's very intelligent, who can make it all back. And I've also enjoyed this journey of life, which has brought me here with the good and the bad. And I think the greatest sin a man can commit in the world today is being a fraction of what he could be. I think that's the biggest sin you can commit in, in the face of your creator. If you're irrelevant globally, but you're right, you're still doing a very important job. There's a whole bunch of men in the world today right now who are irrelevant globally. They don't have names. Nobody knows who they are like people like they know who I am, who work a normal job like a garbage man. But they do a very important job 
They carry the garbage, which must be done. I have absolute respect for these people. They get up every day. It's hard work. They raise their family. They try and raise their kids. They try to be the man of their house. And they may be irrelevant globally, but they're doing the right thing. And that's more important than All right. being well-known and wrong like a lot of these clowns we have in the world today.